We are in a remote corner of the world, but not so remote. Windy is found in southwestern Uganda, bordering the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is within East Africa. In this forest alone, we don't only have the mountain gorillas, but we have chimpanzees. We also have elephants. We have over 300 species of birds. We have so many butterflies. We have all kinds of different monkeys. Windy Impenetrable National Park is a World Heritage Site. Windy has 22 habituated gorilla groups and Moga Inga has one. Windy is Pleistocene forest refugia. It has a lot of uh, uh, endemic species. And there are so many ecological processes taking place and the forest is uh, evolving. And that's what makes Windy a very important conservation site and World Heritage Site. Mountain gorillas live in Uganda, Rwanda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. And they live in two populations. One of them is the Virunga volcanoes, which is the first discovered population. And then Wind is home to 43%, just over 400, just under half of the world's endangered mountain gorillas. So altogether, it makes about 1,063 mountain gorillas. You don't normally see gorillas up in the trees. They're normally down. So we've got them literally getting out of bed because their nests are just here where they went to sleep. They slept here last night. We're really pleased that the numbers of gorillas have gone up over the past 25 years. And there's a combination of factors. And the Uganda Wildlife Authority together with NGOs working in the area and the tour operators, everyone has played a role in the increase in the number of the gorillas, which is exciting. My name is Dr. Gladys Kalema Zuxoka, founder and CEO of Conservation Through Public Health. We started Conservation Through Public Health in 2003, based on experiences I had working as a first veterinarian for the Uganda Wildlife Authority. We found that gorillas were picking up diseases from people living next to the national park when they went outside the park to eat their banana plants. It made me realize that we can't protect the gorillas without improving the health of the people who they share their habitat with. However, I was hired because they were concerned about diseases that could spread from people to gorillas. Tourists who come from all around the world could potentially bring a fatal flu, such as COVID-19. And when the COVID-19 pandemic began, we got extremely concerned that the gorillas could pick up COVID from people, being a very highly contagious virus, which had spread all over the world. And we, our, major, our attention immediately focused towards mitigating the impact of COVID on the gorillas and the people who they share their habitat with. We have been doing a lot of comparative disease investigations over the years and our focus turned to COVID. We, co we regularly collect fecal samples from gorillas every month and when they're abnormal. And as we're testing them for other diseases, we te we've been testing them for COVID or through the pandemic. We are also testing the people who come close to them. This includes the park rangers. This includes the gorilla guardians who safely had gorillas back when they come out. It also includes the conservation personnel who work very closely with the gorillas and the porters who help to carry tourist luggage to the gorillas. So we're testing all the kind of people who are likely to come into close contact with gorillas and making sure that they're safe and healthy so that they don't spread COVID amongst themselves or spread it to the gorillas. Let's hear from Anaclet, our wildlife health and laboratory technician who regularly monitors the health of the gorillas and tests their samples in the Gorilla Health and Community Conservation Field Laboratory. Anaclet Ampeiri is my name. I work as a wildlife health and laboratory technician for conservation through public health. Together with the Uganda Wildlife for Solitary Rangers, we carry out gorilla health monitoring of all the 22 habituated gorilla groups in Gwindi and Mugahinga conservation areas. During gorilla health monitoring, we collect gorilla fecal samples by non-invasive method. The fecal samples collected, we preserve them with the respective preservative depending on the test to be done on the sample. After this breakdown of COVID pandemic, 
we are preserving part of the fecal samples for COVID-19 testing, which is transported to Uganda Virus Research Institute. And the other part will preserve it for zoonotic parasitic infections, which we analyze at the Gorilla Health Center. All of these activities we are doing, we are to make sure we investigate the possible zoonotic infections that can be transmitted to gorillas and look for the possible ways how these gorillas can get rid of these zoonotic infections. Thank you very much. Conservation through Public Health is a member of the COVID-19 task force at the Ministry of Health and because of the One Health, Health work that we do to prevent disease between people and animals and because of this we've remained essential workers all through the pandemic. So when the Delta variant came to Uganda and the whole country was running out of beds and oxygen, they turned to us and asked us, along with other NGOs, if we could support setting up a village COVID task force committees where we work. So we went to the eight villages where gorillas are always coming out and we helped to set up village COVID task forces. Um, we're really, really pleased that the Wildlife Conservation Network came through and were able to use funds from WCN to be able to quickly create 59 village COVID task force committees, which we then constituted of the wildlife authority rangers, the village health and conservation teams who are heading them, making sure that people get home-based care so that they can get treated at home and mild cases don't become severe cases, which then need oxygen and when the country had run out of oxygen. And we also have on there porters who carry tools like into the gorillas, the rangers, it enables the rangers to know which homes are being visited by gorillas, try and prevent the gorillas visiting those homes and knowing which homes have people who are sick. So that even if somebody has a home where they have COVID and they want to carry two weeks to the gorillas, they're able to stop it. Also on that task force committee are the local leaders. The mayor really endorsed it. He attended our first meeting with them as we were training them. But on there, we also have schools, religious leaders, community groups, and women groups. The COVID task force committees have really helped to reduce severe COVID in the communities, which has been amazing. Um, and none of the gorillas have picked up COVID from the communities as a result of these village COVID task force committees. Let's hear from Sharon Akampurira, who is our community health and conservation field officer and has been instrumental in maintaining the Village COVID Task Force Committees, training the people there where we've been able to donate pulse oximeters, infrared thermometers, which has been keeping them going all through the pandemic. Hello everyone, my name is Sharon Akampulira, working as a Community Health and Conservation Field Officer at Conservation Through Public Health. During COVID-19 pandemic, Conservation through public health, together with Ministry of Health, formed 59 village COVID task force committees, and each committee consisted of Uganda World Race Authority representative, both association representatives that carry bags of the tracking tourists, community representatives, village health conservation teams, women representative, school representative, and church representative. The committees were trained on how to manage mild and asymptomatic cases through home-based care. They were trained also on how to, to sensitize the community through, through counseling and guidance, such that the community can get awareness of prevention and vaccination of coronavirus. The committees were given temperature guns, pulse oximeters, masks, and sanitizers to help them while carry out the activity. Thank you very much. We started a program of providing fast growing seedlings to the local community so they can have something to eat now and even after tourism ends because we wanted to get them back to farming, which is something that they used to do before tourism began. And do it sustainably using proper soil and water conservation so that even when tourists come back they won't use the money from tourism for food they'll use it for other things like paying school fees so we call this the ready to grow program it's 10 fast growing seedlings 
which are highly nutritional and reduce their need to enter the park to poach. When we distributed the seedlings, they told us that the main reason they're poaching is because they're hungry. And since we started the Ready to Grow program, which has so generously been supported by Wildlife Conservation Network, um, since we started this Ready to Grow program, the communities are entering the forest less. They're even having less human wildlife conflict because when the animals come into their garden, they're not finding crops that they like to eat. So all in all, it's been a win-win situation, both now during the pandemic and after the pandemic ends. Another way that we've supported people during the pandemic is through our coffee farmers. We started Gorilla Conservation Coffee because we realized that people living around the park were not getting a steady market or fair price for their coffee and they're entering the park to poach and collect firewood. So we give them above market prices for good coffee, which is sold to tourists and people all over the world. But unfortunately, during the pandemic, with no tourism, it was very difficult to support these coffee farmers. And we had to look for markets out of Uganda, manual beans in the UK, gccoffeeusa.com, which is ubipangos.com, started to buy the coffee, and New Zealand, and Australia, Kenya. And this has enabled the, the coffee farmers around Windy to keep going. So whereas many people are not earning a living during the pandemic, our coffee farmers are earning a living. We support over 500 coffee farmers. We've been able to train them during the pandemic and they've been able to earn a living. At least 150 out of the 500 who have been able to buy their coffee. This includes women, reform poachers and youth. When the pandemic began in March 2020, our biggest concern was diseases spreading from tourists to the gorillas. So we advocated to the Uganda Wildlife Authority along with other conservation NGOs on the importance of upgrading the gorilla viewing guidelines. Already even before the pandemic, people and gorillas were getting too close to each other during visits. They were getting closer than the recommended seven meters. So we advocated to them and the, they increased the distance from seven to 10 meters. But most importantly, people started to wear masks. Already gorillas and chimpanzees had ever picked up respiratory diseases from people before the pandemic. And so now with COVID being even more contagious, we made sure that everyone visits the gorillas has to wear a mask, a protective face mask. The rangers, the conservation personnel, and tourists, everybody has to wear a mask when they're within 10 meters of the endangered mountain gorillas. We also made sure that hand hygiene improves, good disinfection, but temperatures are taken before people enter the park. We're no longer relying on people just looking like they're sick. We have to take their temperatures. And we took this further and teamed up with other groups, the International Gorilla Conservation Program, which helped to set up gorilla tourism in Uganda in the 1990s. We teamed up with them and CTPH and IGCP created a policy brief as part of the Africa CSO Biodiversity Alliance, which was also created during the COVID-19 pandemic to strengthen the African voice in the Convention of Biological Diversity. And so through the ACBA platform, the Africa CSO Biodiversity Alliance platform, we've created a policy brief to reach all the 21 countries that have great apes and within which 13 of them have great ape tourism at 33 sites of which Uganda and Rwanda has the largest, um, largest amount of great ape tourism and through this we're advocating to all the governments to adopt these gorilla viewing guidelines but also at the same time to try and encourage tourists to support communities when they visit the park because we found that this has really supported the communities, the pandemic showed that but also to look for non-tourism dependent livelihoods such as Gorilla Conservation Coffee and others and the ready to grow to be able to support communities. And so this policy brief is targeted towards the governments, the donors and the tour operators so that they talk to their tourists that before they arrive, that don't expect to have a selfie, don't expect to get close to the gorillas, we can easily make them sick. So that in the process the tourists come knowing that they have to be responsible tourists. This is going to be launched in uh, July. 2022 during the IUCN Africa Protected Area Conference which is something we're very proud about and in fact the policy brief is really promoting the IUCN guidelines for great ape tourism and so it's a it's a great opportunity to get everybody involved and becoming a responsible tourism and being responsible to ensure that we have responsible great ape tourism so that everybody benefits a good guest becomes a partner in conservation and this not only involves treading lightly when you're visiting them so you don't make them sick and allowing them to carry out their natural behaviours, but also supporting the communities that have to learn how to coexist with the gorillas because by giving back to the communities, 
you're giving them an economic incentive not to have to enter the forest to poach and destroy the gorilla's habitat. Because not everybody benefits from the tourism industry, not everybody can be a porter or a ranger or sell crafts. As we continue to protect the mountain gorillas and other wildlife during the COVID-19 pandemic, we found that it's crucial to work very closely with the local communities. It's crucial to work very closely with tourists and all the stakeholders who are involved in the conservation of mountain gorillas. We'd like to thank WCM and all our donors and partners, the Wildlife Authority, the Ministry of Health, the local government, the conservation NGOs we're working closely with, to, for, and the health NGOs, for all the great support during the pandemic. Um, this has enabled us to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on people and the endangered mountain gorillas. We, we published a paper about this, which we'd love to share through the WCN platform, and we encourage you to come visit the gorillas um, re as responsible tourists so that we can continue to grow their numbers. We're really pleased that they're showing a positive growth trend and we're really praying that the pandemic is not going to reverse that. With your support, this will be possible. For more information, visit our website, www.ctph.org and buy Gorilla Conservation Coffee wherever you are in America and around the world at www.gccoffee.org. Thank you.